Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1,353. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel magic 1,353 start or the finished file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We got to see how to use Power Query to extract records with the merge feature and an inner join on a parameter table. Now, actually, I've done a bunch of recent videos on extracting records, and our awesome online Excel teammate Pomusco also just did an amazing video for using Power Query to extract records. Now, back in 1346, we actually used an array formula. 1347, we saw how to create a Power Query function to do it. 1349, I showed you how to use an input variable from an Excel sheet to extract records. And then Pomusco, who referenced this video, said, hey, guess what? You don't have to create multiple queries to extract the criteria inside Power Query. He showed in this video how to use the merge feature to do this. He did a right outer join. I'm going to do an inner join. All right, here's the situation. Here's our table. Here's our criteria. I simply want to be able to put whatever criteria here that will look at this table and find only the records for the criteria in that cell and then export them off to the side. Now, in order to use Power Query, both tables are going to have to be Excel tables. Now, I've already converted this one to a table. And up in Design, Properties, the table name of that one is Fact Table. I want to convert this to a table. I'm going to use not insert table, which would convert it to a table. But I'm going to use Control T. My table has headers. Click OK. Now I want to name this table. So I go up to Design, Properties, and then I can click up here. And I'm going to call this Employee Table and Enter. Now, I would like to add data validation to this table here. So I have a dropdown where I can select from my list of employees. So I'm going to click in the first cell in this table, Data Ribbon tab, over to Data Validation and click that button, or use the keyboard Alt-D-L. Now, by default, we can allow any value. I'm going to hit Tab to get to that field and then type the letter L to get to list. There are many options for data validation, but we want a list from the cells. Tab, I get down to the source dialog box, and now I can highlight cells that contain only the values I want to be allowed in this cell, and I'll have a cell dropdown. Click OK. The nice thing about this is, of course, it's easy to change. Not only that, but if I decide later to add new employee names that should be included in the extract, that data validation list will automatically be carried down as part of the table feature. Now I need to import both of these tables into Power Query and then merge them. I'm going to click in a single cell in this first table. Now in Excel 2016, you simply go up to Data. And Power Query is Get and Transform. If you have Excel 2013 or 10, you actually have to download Power Query and install it as a separate tab. In any version for Power Query, you simply click From Table. And it will import that table. I'm looking at each one of the icons for data type. Text is fine. Oops, I don't want date and text. So I click the icon and choose data type date. If I didn't do that, it would be exported back into Excel with that time. And I don't want that. Text is fine. Text, text is fine. That name is OK. There are our steps. I'm simply going to come up to close and load, close and load to. I want only create a connection. Now, we have to load it into Power Query with this connection so it is an official query, or else we wouldn't be able to merge the two tables. Now I click Load. I can see over here, there is my query. Now I'm going to click in this table, and I need to load it. Instead of going with my mouse, I'm going to use the keyboard Alt-A-P-T to load from a table in Excel. That name is fine. Those steps are fine. Data type is good. Close and load. Close and load to. Only create a connection. Load. 
there's our two tables. And in order to merge, you have to enter them as a connection only into Power Query. We can't merge them directly as tables. Now we go up to Data, New Query, Combine Queries, and Merge is what we want. Now, the Merge feature will ask us for the two tables. Now, Pomusco selected the Fact table. That's the table with all the records. And the Employee table selected Employee in both tables. By doing this, we are connecting them. There will be a relationship that is defined by the join kind. He chose a right outer which will do exactly the same thing as an inner. But technically, what right outer is going to do, this is the right table. So it will take everything from the right and only matching records from the left. So because there's only one name here, it will only take the records for that particular employee. But we can also do an inner join, only matching rows in both. It will still exclude all of the names that are not in this table. It's only going to take the matching records. And since employee is the join connector for this relationship, we'll get only the records for that particular employee. If we were writing SQL code, it would be select these field names from fact table, inner join, employee table, on employee column. But here in Power Query, of course, we don't have to write that code. We use this user interface. I'm going to click OK, which opens the Power Query editor. I definitely want to name it right off the bat. I'm going to name it, I called it Extracted Records Table and Enter. Now, because we merged the two tables, it adds an extra column with this Expand button. Now, if we click the Expand button, normally we see multiple columns for the table here, but there's only one. But guess what? We don't even need this. We used it to merge the tables. But now we're going to get rid of it because we didn't really want to merge it. We just wanted to use that as a method of extracting only the employee specified. So I'm going to right click Remove this column. I'm checking each one of the data types, text, text, date, text, those are all fine. Now I can come up to close and load. Close and load to. Definitely want it as a table. And I'm going to put it on this existing sheet. Click the Collapse button. I'm going to try and put it in I-15. Click OK. Click Load. We can see our three queries over here. 19 records were loaded. Now I'm going to zoom out. And there we have our record. So we're analyzing, and we see each one is a different sale, customer, the method, in-person phone. And look at that. This employee had all sales. That is remarkable. We need to figure out what that technique is. We can go to the next employee. But look at that. Unlike with our array formula, which automatically updates, this method does not automatically update. But no problem. I can come over and right click Refresh. And look at that. There are the new records. Wow, look at this employee. All sales too. And we will look at yet another employee. Right click Refresh. Wow, analyzing this. Look at that, a bunch of no sales. That's not very good. Now, the cool thing about using a table, and really the reason that the power tools like Power Query, Power Pivot, demand that we take data from Excel and put it into an Excel table before we put it into the Power Tools is for this very reason. I can simply come to this cell, and when I hit Tab, it adds a new record to the object table. So if I select two employees now, it will extract records for both employees. Now, technically, this will be an OR logical test. It's asking the question, is this employee for this record equal to the first employee, or is this employee equal to the second employee? Now, this is an OR logical test. Actually, in 1347, where we created a Power Query function, we used an AND logical test. But no problem. This will work. Right click, refresh. 
And boom, look at that. Now, you know, we could, if we were simply going to do this, meaning extract it off the site, we could use advanced filter. And let's just take a quick look at that. Here's a data set. There's the criteria. There's the extract area. I click in a single cell, go up to data, over to advanced filter, or we could use the keyboard Alt A Q. Now, advanced filter needs a proper data set, and you can see that it's highlighted there. There's the list range. I definitely want to copy to another location, which opens up the Copy To text box. Criteria range, field name spelled correctly, and the criteria below. Just like our Power Query example, this is an OR logical test. So it will get this one or this one. And I didn't want anybody, so I put NA. Copy to. I'm going to highlight the range. And you can actually restrict the number of fields to extract by highlighting only the columns you want in the order you want. But I want them all. And now I click OK. Now, that does seem pretty easy. But remember, we had the ability with Power Query to simply change this and then right click refresh. With Advanced Filter, we'd have to come back over here. And luckily, Advanced Filter behind the scenes created defined names for the criteria, the extract area, and it remembers where the table is. So when I Alt A Q, look at that. It's already filled out. Now I do need to remember to check Copy to another location. But when I click OK, instantly that works also. And if I wanted OR logical test to work, Alt A Q. And actually, I could do, notice that the O is underlined. I could use Alt O and then Enter. And look at that. So if you knew the keyboards, that is another alternative. But what is so cool about this example right here is that our online Excel team is awesome. Together, we always come up with so many amazing ways to do things in Excel. All right, thanks to Pomusco. We'll see you next video.